What happened with you where you decided or you be took on a more fatalistic attitude? I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. Hello guys, welcome to a new video on AINet. Today we're going to talk about Gemini 2.0. So let's have a look at the 2.0 error from Gemini, aka Google DeepMind. So first of all, sure, I can help with this. First. So first of all, they have introduced multimodal AI agents. So models that will take action, remember, have memory, be able to see, hear, think, and plan. The most important part of agents is taking action, of course. And as you can see, they have native tool use. So uh, this is the part of the agents, the part where they will take actions. They have native text-to-speech and they have native image generation. So what they have done is um, use intelligent systems that can use memory, reasoning and planning to complete tasks for you. You can see, take an action, agents can follow instructions and take helpful actions under your supervision. Tool use, agents can search for information, look up reviews and translate and more. Real-time streaming, agents respond to live audio and video inputs. Agents also use multimodal understanding. So they have switched to um, understanding video and your native audio input. As you can see, this woman is using a camera and uh, in real time it's being translated. Let's watch the video. All right, we've got a Pixel phone loaded with the latest test build of Project Astra. And we're going to leave the office to test it around London. I've got this email with apartment info. Can you tell me the door code and remember it? I'll remember the door code for you. It is 1170. To unlock it, enter the code and then press the unlock button. Based on these symbols, how should I wash this? The tag shows to machine wash at 30 degrees Celsius. Avoid bleach and tumble drying. Iron on low and dry cleanable. Then what setting should I use on this machine? Based on the laundry instructions of 30 degrees Celsius, select the 30 setting under Easy Care on the dial. I've got this list of recommendations. Can you tell me a bit about some of them? I can search for these places for you. Cold Drops Yard is a shopping destination with unique industrial design. Luminary Bakery is a social enterprise bakery. And Tate Modern is a modern and contemporary art museum. Now we're going to try Project Astra out on the street. Let's see what it can do. I've always said scone, but now I'm hearing people say scone. Can you help me with the pronunciation? It's a fascinating topic, the pronunciation of scone. Both scone rhyming with gone and scone rhyming with bone are accepted pronunciations, though regional variations exist. What can you tell me about this sculpture? The sculpture you're seeing is called My World and Your World by Eva Rothschild, located in Lewis Cubitt Park in London. What kind of themes does her work explore? She creates abstract sculptures that invite viewers to interact with and interpret their surroundings in new ways. Uh, would these do well if I planted them back home? Mountain fleece can grow well in New York. They prefer full sun to partial shade and moist, well-drained soil. So your garden in New York should be a good fit for these flowers. I'm trying to get a gift for my friend, and this is everything she's been reading. How would you describe her taste in books? Based on these titles, your friend seems to enjoy a mix of history, biography, and perhaps a touch of political or social commentary. I picked some of these out. Any idea which one she'd like the most? Consider Half of a Yellow Sun for its exploration of complex social and political issues within a historical setting, aligning with her interest in narratives that offer insight into significant periods. Will that bus take me anywhere near Chinatown? Yes, it does. The 24 bus route goes through Leicester Square, which is very close to Chinatown. Are there any landmarks on the way? Riding the number 24 bus, notable landmarks you will likely encounter are Westminster Abbey, Big Ben, and Trafalgar Square. I also met up with some friends to test out the multilingual capabilities. Est-ce que tu peux me dire quelque chose d'intéressant à propos de ces lanternes? Bien sûr, je peux vous parler des lanternes. Les lanternes que vous voyez font partie de la porte d'entrée de Chinatown à Londres. Elles ont une signification culturelle pour les Chinois et sont souvent utilisées pendant les célébrations et les festivals. Je peux te dire quelque chose d'intéressant à propos de ces lanternes? 
இது லண்டனில் உள்ள சைனா டவுன் நுழைவாயில் இது ஒரு குறிப்பிடத்தக்க அடையாளமாகும் இது அந்த பகுதியின் கலாச்சார முக்கியத்துவத்தை குறிக்கிறது Now I'm using these prototype glasses to test Project Astra hands-free. Can you check if it's going to rain anytime soon? It looks like it is currently mostly sunny in London. Rain is expected tonight from around 10 p.m. until tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Hey, what's that park next to me? The park looks to be Primrose Hill, known for its panoramic city views and the notable Shakespeare's tree. Can you check if I can bike in there? It appears that cycling is actually banned within Primrose Hill itself, although it is permitted in nearby areas and the rest of Regent's Park. I'm biking back to Camden. Can you check if there's any supermarkets along the way? There's a Sainsbury's on Camden Road, a Morrison's on Chalk Farm Road, and an M&S Simply Food on Camden High Street. What was the door code again? The door code you saved previously is 1170. Oh, thanks. That works. So, like we have seen in this video, they have acquired a multimodal experience and understanding. So, to video, native audio input, and also text, of course. They also have introduced agents, AI models that will take action for you. This applies to different applications, starting with your browser. This is another video about it. Today, I want to tell you about Project Mariner. It's a research prototype exploring the future of human agent interaction and is built on Gemini 2.0. Like with all new technology, it's important for us to build this responsibly, which is why we're starting small. We'll be getting feedback from a group of trusted testers and using their experiences to really shape how Project Mariner evolves. Let me show you how it works. So Project Mariner works in the browser as an experimental Chrome extension. I'm going to start by entering a prompt. Here, I have a list of outdoor companies listed in Google Sheets, and I want to find their contact information. So I'll ask the agent to take this list of companies, then find their websites and look up a contact email I can use to reach them. This is a simplified example of a tedious multi-step task that someone could encounter at work. Now, the agent has read the Google Sheet and knows the company names. It then starts by searching Google for benchmark climbing. And now it's going to click into the website. You can see how this research prototype only works in your active tab. It doesn't work in the background. Once it finds the email address, it remembers it and moves on to the next company. At any point in this process, you can stop the agent or hit pause. What's cool is that you can actually see the agent's reasoning in the user interface so that you can better understand what it is doing. And it will do the same thing for the next two companies, navigating your browser, clicking links, scrolling, and recording information as it goes. You're seeing an early stage research prototype, so we sped this up for demo purposes. We're working with trusted testers to make it faster and smoother, and it's so important to keep a human in the loop. After the fourth website, the agent has completed its task, listing out the email addresses for me to use. And there you have it. We're really just scratching the surface of what's possible when you bring agentic AI to computers. And we're really excited to see where this goes next. So Google has really upped their game with these new models and they have combined all these capabilities into Gemini 2.0, the 2.0 era. What I find really fascinating is the reasoning behind it and that you can see the reasoning and also interact with it. So you can pause it or stop it. Like I said previously, they have really upped their game. They have also introduced Gemini 2.0 for games, so agents that can help you navigate the virtual world of video games. So while you're playing a video game, the agent will see your screen and reason based on the data from the screen. And it will guide you through the game. You also have agents for developers, a coding agent capable of fixing bugs, editing and validating code, and managing tasks on a developer's supervision. So they have introduced spatial understanding, as Gemini to give you the locations of objects, text and more. Video understanding, outline key moments or summarize with an overview in a paragraph or even a haiku. Functions calling with Maps API, ask questions based on geography or choose a pre-populated topic to watch the map travel to different locations using Google Maps. So they also introduced their multimodal live API 
and it helps developers build applications with better na natural language interactions and video understanding. So they have real-time screen recording. As you can see, there's a video about it. Let's go watch it. This is a quick demo of multimodal live streaming in Gemini 2.0, and we are casting a tab into AI Studio. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, I see your screen. It's showing a document with the title Demo. It also contains bullet points and a Google Meet window with a person in the video. Is there anything in particular you would like to talk about on the screen? Yeah, can you start the demo by just reading the text I highlighted? Sure, I can do that. The text you highlighted reads, the Multimodal Live API lets you build real-time multimodal applications powered by Gemini 2.0 Flash. It features tool use like Google search and code execution, function calling, and more. Would you like me to read the following lines too? No, can you actually just tell me what this word means though? I can do that. Multimodal refers to the ability to process and understand different types of data, like text, images, and audio all together. Does that help? Yeah, um, I need to demo the interruptions feature next. Can you tell me a really boring kind of once upon a time sort of story? Okay, I can do that. Once upon a time, in a small village nestled beside a quiet forest, there was a very unremarkable rock. This rock was gray and it was round oh, and sorry, it sat there. I just interrupt you. No problem. I understand that interruptions are part of the demo. What should I do now? Um, so we're going to demo memory. Can you just summarize everything we've seen or heard so far? I can do that. So far, we've discussed a demo of the Multimodal Live API, which lets you build real-time multimodal apps, and I defined what multimodal means. I was also asked to tell a very boring once upon a time story, but I was interrupted. Is there anything else? Uh, no, I think we're done. Um, do you want to read this ending card or should I? I can read it if you would like. The ending card says, start building with Gemini 2.0 at aistudio.google.com. Is that correct? Yeah, that was great. All right, thanks. Talk to you later. So as we have seen in this video, they can really help you in real time. It's really fascinating to see that Google is finally really applying their models. Google DeepMind has stated that Gemini 2.0 is their most capable model yet. So let's take a look at the benchmarks. These benchmarks are only focused on themselves, on their previous models. As we can see, 2.0 has slight improvement over 1.5 Pro, but by combining all these functions, they have created amazing applications that can be used in real life. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, Smiley Face.